Like, I'll like come off a setup wake and just show, pow, and just get wiped out. These the infamous discontinued MSDs. Why would you run, run something outdated? That's so crazy. That's what I want everyone to think so we can buy out these. All right, do a little MSD timing, or at least the best that I know. Um, I don't know, there's not really much for videos out there. So I'm not a genius, so if I'm doing something wrong, just message and comment, but I haven't blown up a motor yet. So, but if you come over here, we'll look at the plate. Um, first thing you'll do, you'll set up your MSD as if it was in the ski grounds and hook your battery up and all that stuff. So your MSD is fully powered. So we got our, our battery, ground motor, ground to plate. The only thing it's not wired up is the starter. Um, but and then if you look on your plate here, um, you go to switch three and then it'll say S4 is your timing setup. It's got LED and ignition operate. So when it's off, it's running your ignition. When it's on, it's running an LED light, which we'll show you in a second here. But that's on the MSD plate. So if we go to your switch panel, um, as it reads on the plate, you got, um, this is your SW1, SW2, SW3. And you're looking for it's labeled one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight across this way. Um, so when you're when you go to do your timing, you'll use the fourth one, one, two, three, four, ups on the on position. So if a dip switch is in the up position, it's on. Down position's off. So you go to your fourth one, one, two, three, four, and we have that on, which turns on the LED operate function of your MSD, which is actually this little light right here on the back side. And what that'll do is when your trigger plate passes over your pickup, your pickup passes over your trigger plate, whichever way, um, it'll turn that light on at the same time that your spark would go off. So you want it to set so when the LED comes on, it'll spark on your motor. So now that we got that set up, we can go through how to verify your timing, and or at least how I verify it. If you have better ways to do it, if I'm doing it wrong, you can let me know. But I use, from Motion Pro, they have a dial indicator that threads into your spark plug adapter, and that'll give you your piston height. And then you have your Motion Pro degree indicator for your flywheel. So this just bolts onto your flywheel. My flywheel's on, this is bolted on as well. So basically what I'll do, I'll use my dial indicator to find top dead center. So I'll just dial it back right now. So as I turn my motor, my piston's coming up on the dial indicator. And once, the, once it starts going back down, you know your piston's at the top. So in the direction of the motor spinning, I'll find top dead center on this. So I'll just kind of bounce it back and forth until that dial indicator's at its highest position. So you'll kind of see how it's bouncing back and forth there. So I'll just set it right at its highest position, right about there. And then I'll come down to my, my degree wheel on my flywheel. This is like the double check. So I'll, I use like basically gun sights. So what I'll do, I'll put a mark on my flywheel cover. I'll put a mark on my case and then the mark on the degree wheel. So when all th three of those line up, just like a gun sight, you know you're aimed in at the same degree every time. So for top dead center, we put the zero mark on the two lines and that'll give us a solid reference point on the indicator and the flywheel that we're actually at top dead center. So from here, I'm gonna set this motor to 32 degrees, we'll say. And that's what it's at right now. But so what I'll do in the direction of travel, I gotta spin my motor back because 
your timings before so everything's gonna it's gonna ignite before it comes to top dead center so I spin my motor backwards and I'll get it to close to 32 degrees and then if we see if I can get this light over here closer see if you can kind of get this way we're gonna watch when this LED indicator light comes on which should come on at 32 degrees so spin it around and there it is so you want when you set your timing you want it so as you're spinning the motor in the direction that it's turning right when that LED turns on is going to be its first spark signal so as it turns on right there is where our timing is going to start so we'll go back over here I'm gonna once again I'm gonna spin it backwards and then your motor will travel in a so, so you're interrupted by the dog yeah okay you gotta have a shop dog around <laughs> but um so like I said you want it so as you turn the motor in the direction it rotates that when that light first comes on the second it comes on bam that's when your sparks gonna initiate so that's when you want to set your timing to so you want to get it so the light just barely comes on and then look back over at your degree wheel and then line up your bomb sights again so if you go from 32 and line these two lines up it's like right on the money right now so the other thing you can do there's calculators and you can go you can go ahead and download and renew super high quality so this is called torque soft and you can enter in your your stroke your rod length and your rod angle and it'll tell you how much your piston should be dropped below top dead center in your actual piston rise and that's just another way to double check exactly where where your piston is at in relation to your timing so this one's supposed to be at 9.92 or 2.92 and we're right there we're at 2.96 plenty close enough and we're at 32 on the degree wheel so our rear cylinder is set at 32 degrees and then so the important part is you have to check both cylinders because your pickups or your triggers could be off just a little bit so well okay, actually so just make sure I understood that you found the height of the piston using the dial indicator there correct what yep no nope, known quantity okay yep so it will go back to top dead center real quick you can see it rising so it's set at zero for top dead center and then as we bring the motor back down to when the light comes on there's one rotation there's two rotation and then I'll stop when the light comes off bam oh bam so right about there and we're at oh now we're at 2.92 so exactly what we're supposed to be at and then once again it aligns up with the the degree wheel on your flywheel so it's just a good way to double check just to make sure something didn't happen to this while you're turning it and then this is off because even when you find top dead center like you'll notice that on your dial indicator there's a little bit of play in your flywheel that it won't pick up it's kind of slop in your when your pistons at top dead center it's kind of slop and you can actually pick up that little bit of slop on your degree wheel so between the two of them it's a, it's the best way to get an accurate reading on exactly where your timing set at and then so the next phase is to go we'll spin this out and we'll check our front cylinder we want to make sure that our motors 180 degrees off as far as timing goes so I'll spin this off I'm not going to touch my my uh, degree wheel and I'm just going to move it to the front cylinder is all and then we'll refine top dead center on our front cylinder so spin her down So we'll get our gauge reset and I'll spin it. So now instead of top dead center on the flywheel, our mark 180 degrees off will be bottom dead center, which will be top dead center on our front because they're 180 degree opposite. So I'm gonna spin it all the way around and we're gonna move to the bottom dead center. And once again, I'm gonna verify the zero on bottom dead center 
lines up with my bomb, bomb sights and equals the same thing on my dial indicator. So I'm gonna spin it on the dial indicator and find right about where top dead is. Then I'm gonna check it on my bomb sight. Right there. And we are, and we're good. Our bottom dead center matches our top dead center. So that's good. That Did just you have that, that same play there too, or? Yep, yeah, roughly the same. Um, so all we did on that, what I just currently did there, all we did is just make sure our degree wheel didn't change at all. And then I'll actually set this back to zero on my dial here. And then we'll go through the same process again. At 32 here. So we'll get that to 32 degrees with the light turning on. Bam, so light, light just turned on. So through the bomb sights we're reading, we got 32 degrees on our, on our front piston timing on our degree wheel. Now we're just gonna go up here to make sure that we're reading 32 degrees on our dial indicator. All we're gonna do is I'm gonna set it right there till the light first came on. We're at 32 degrees here and I'm gonna look at the dial indicator. Now I'm just gonna count revolutions and, and then figure it out from there. Um, but it should be as close as possible to 2.92 on travel. So as I spin it to get it up to top dead center, we're just gonna kind of see where we're at. So we're at one revolution, two revolution, and it should stop right at zero there. And it did, maybe just a touch above it. So we made two revolutions and we're one, two, three, four, five, six short. So the, the timing set at 2.94, which is plenty close enough, like the MSD, even signal lights not even as accurate as that so basically what we just did we just verified that both our front and rear cylinder are exactly at 32 degrees advanced we found top dead center on both and we and we verified it with our ignition light so now we know both cylinders are exactly 100 degree 180 degrees off and both of them are firing at 32 degrees advanced so that's just a way to, to check your timing and to set your timing on your MSD um, and yeah and then if you do need to change anything you just take your take your degree wheel off and you'll you'll actually adjust your pickup plates if i'm saying like certain things wrong my apologies <laughs> but i think they should know what i mean Come on there little buddy of course we're gonna have the flywheel get stuck Logie, come here. Oh, I did this before. What are you doing, bud? For whatever reason, my woodruff key gets jammed. I'll cut this out. Yeah, thank you. Maybe, maybe not. Ah! I mean, there we go. A B-roll, uh, like at the end of the... You can see we struggle as well. So if you do need to adjust anything, you're gonna adjust them with these two screws. You can loosen them and change your your pickups in direction of your your actual signal, which is the battery or the magnet on the back of your flywheel. That's how it picks up signal. The battery or the magnet goes over the pickup, and that's what sets the timing or initiates spark. But basically, you can loosen these two, and on these slots, you can turn it either more retarded or or less and that's basically how you you'll set them and if you you can get a little bit more advanced the more advanced if some sometimes there's situations where one of your one of your cylinders is going to be set at you know 28 degrees and the other one's set at 31 degrees so basically what you'll do in that situation is you'll find which pickup is is you can set either one but pick one you know, if this one's set at 32, so when the magnet passes it, that rear cylinder is at 32, but your front one, when the magnet passes it, it's only at 28. What you actually do, you'll take these little screws out and you can basically, 
I don't know, kind of wallow the holes out and move your pickup up and down slightly. So if, if one's, so if your motor spins this way and if one cylinder is ahead of the other one, so it's less retarded, then you'll just move your pickup back slightly, tighten it back down and check it again and get them both e even again. And, um, and that would be the way to, to sync your pickups so they're exactly 180 degrees off. Um, but yeah, that's basically a quick, simple rundown on how I set up my MSD systems. Um, huge shout out to Dusty. Uh, he taught me out tons of stuff and there's tons of good dudes you can hit up and, and get good information from. But um, that's about as much as I know. So hopefully it helps. Cool, thanks. All right, so now we're gonna, we air tested our motor and our front crank seal was leaking. So we flipped it upside down and just to do crank seals, um, super easy way to go about it is just flip your motor upside down, take your bed plates off. And then before you actually get too crazy in it, you have to make sure your flywheel and your coupler are off. So. First things first, if your crank seal is leaked, just take your flywheel and coupler off and then go ahead and start the process. You'll take your bed plates off, you'll take the bottom of your case off, and then you'll expose your crankshaft. From here, all you have to do is lift up on your crank, just lift it out of its um, the seals. You can pull your seals off, put your new seals on, set it in, and reseal your, your case. Um, and for... For torque specs and stuff, like this is an X-Cream motor, so we're gonna just go by X-Cream specs, but um, reference the Yamaha manual for a lot of the stuff. There's tons of good information in there. I recommend anybody get a Yamaha Superjet manual um, to cover it. Uh, one of the other things we're gonna be doing in between these two rear seals, we're gonna put a little bit of grease just to help the seals. And for the case seal in itself, we're gonna use um, three bonds, two, or 1211. So we're just gonna use 1211. I'm gonna put a light light layer all the way around it and I'm gonna smear it in with my finger just to kind of cover everything. You don't want a thick layer. You don't want a bunch of it to push into your, into your cases. So just a nice thin layer. And then we'll put our, our lower half of the case back on, torque it. We'll put our bed plates on, we'll torque it. And in 24 hours, the motor will be ready to ride. Okay, now we can we can do editing or whatever we need to do from yeah. there. I'm trying to think how I did this last time. Is that a good decent intro? Yeah, yeah you're actually surprisingly well at that. No, oh, Kevin's like yeah. he's a one with words. Ah! Just lift it out easy. God, for the love of Christ! I'm not sure where the fuck's moving right now. Hmm. Oh, man. I'll edit this out. No, please don't. Yeah, just fuck like it. <laughs> ah! I don't know why it won't come free. Business here. Okay, well, we're stuck in there. Pistons are gonna come straight up. <laughs> <laughs> if they do, PHP crank ordered overnight. Tonight, yeah. yeah. Like, send it right now. We'll go send someone to go drive and get it. Oh my god. This thing does not want to come for you. At all. You got a rubber mallet or something? Maybe to tap the. I don't know what plate, like there's play in this. Mm -hmm. It's weird. Should there be? I've seen like the cases look kind of compressed on the bearings and hold it together, but. Oh. I've seen like. Is that good, Brad? Some of those pins in there that hold the crank bearings. I don't know, dude. It's are coming these, from are the these all in there? Yeah. Yeah, it is in that like rear bearing. But it might be with the case off too. I get in the front too. Hmm. 
Hmm. You got something to tap it? I kind of don't want to tap it. I feel like there shouldn't be any play in this. No, I'm paranoid. <laughs> I don't know what you did, but I pulled really hard. See, just nice and easy. Just a little bit of force. Ooh, and that's as high as we need it. Actually, almost too high. Um, should we get a, a little something to shove under there? Like a rag or something? Like Brian's that? hands. Brian, shove your hand in there. We got under. Lineup pins. Oh, yeah, lineup pins. I don't know what I missed there, but uh, I wasn't recording for, <laughs> oh. <laughs> for probably the whole time we're trying to get the crank out. Nice. You come up any higher? Mm-hmm. Right here. I'm going to say, let's do this. Hold on. Because we're going to have to get them out when we do that. Oh, yeah. So. How about? Hold on. Maybe if I come over to that side. I lift. I I'll see if I can pinch the webs. Yeah, all right. I can do that. You want to just pull the seals out? Yeah, sure. Oh. Uh-oh. Got it. Front. Oh, yeah. Leaky bastard. Is this welded? Is that the one that is like a, a collar? Uh, uh, up front here? That's the back one. The back one has a collar. Oh. And this is nice and good on that one. So. Is there anything you need to check with that collar? Just make sure it's. Just I've make seen sure a leak from there before. It so. didn't come off with the, with the seal. Yeah. It's good. It's just a beater motor. Okay. Um, and then, yeah, you know, when you put the new ones on, to be super careful not to. So, that's front. Tell the people, Brian. Yeah, I've only had two motors blow up right after we did crank seals, so <laughs> I'm pretty sure we know what's going on here. I've only done three of these, so I feel like 30% success is a victory. And also very critical that you have like a table that you found from a yard sale um, to do all this work on. Critical, critical component. All right, Brian, you ready to throw them on? Mm -mm. No? He's ready. Brian's just greasing the inner part of the seal here. Yeah, and then you got all these, these pins, these pinholes. Oh, those are critical. You gotta make sure each one of those are set, otherwise your bearing won't actually seat all the way down and yep so in the top half of the crankcase there's a a pin under each one of these that has to sit in so we'll go ahead and spin them all and get them lined up like i said i usually don't blow up motors but when i do it's really good so <laughs> so brian's just greasing up the the inner seals there. Just throwing a little lube on there for some loving. Okay, good. Then I can comment. Yeah, if you're, if you're a real work. hack, you'll just freaking crush them down and <laughs> just slam it together. Yeah. yeah. 
Brian's being a bit cunty over here. <laughs> <laughs> there may be a, a, a blooper reel at the end, though. <laughs> Loki, come over here and hold this. Here, wipe my finger off. Good grip, good grip. Oh, when you're doing these, the rear crank seals go like this, and the nipples, always remember nipples out. So nipples out on the outer seal, this one behind it, boom, just like that. So always nipples out. Excellent tip. Mm -hmm. Keep them nipples out. Still got it. <laughs> Must have that center one. It's usually like these gaps are that looks right. It's like yeah, we we got the center one when we first dropped it in. Right? I think so. Yeah, you can pick it up if you want to. You... Brian, bless it so if it blows up, yeah. I can blame it on you. And that, there's that. Does it feel well seated? Yeah, I'll pick it up just slightly. Can you rotate it and you feel? Oh man, suction once again. That would be probably in there then. As long as everything else lines up. Yeah, these bearings are good, these bearings are good. We set that one right away. The crank turns, that's good. So it's good we're not using a seized up crank here. How's it look on the... Well, if we do it like this, actually, we can be easier for us to get the ceiling on there. Oh, check. Got some goop down here. No, that appears to be. God, I just wish this one floated more. Anything else you guys want to point out here? Is it uh, uh -uh. just 12-11? Oh, Put it back together. We're already here. Yeah, let's check that center one again. Fuck it. Is that the sweet spot or? Yeah, it's gotta be. Look at it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Check them all again. I'm just gonna drop on one of these. Agree. Hey guys, you ever wonder what a well ported set of cases looks like? All right, I'm going to show you. Check this out. This is a TPE 1105 set of cases I have. If you notice, every set of ported cases starts off before the porting filled in with an epoxy here. I forget the name of it, but uh, some like pretty typical stuff. Has like a uh, like an aluminum compound to it. If you see like the top porting, you see how it's um, like here. It's really opened up over stock cases. Some stock cases here. I didn't prepare for this very well, but I'll show you in a minute. But you can see, if you look right down the middle too, it's uh, trenched. So at the very bottom, it's trenched for a five or correction, a uh, ten mil crank. Each set of cases. 
And then here too, they're filled in with aluminum and epoxy. It's like, it's really nice. So you can't even, like, it's a machine surface now and you can't even really tell the difference um, besides looking at it. And there's like some, uh, some marker there to kind of mark the uh, case porting, but it is just really opened up here. Like all this area all open. On the sides. And then if you spin it around here, sometimes uh, builders will fill in these fingers with epoxy to get it smooth there. Likewise, both sides. But as you can see, it's smoothed out quite a bit. Yeah. So you just see how it's all this area here where you see epoxy. It would, would have been just a void space in stock cases. Yeah, I've got stock cases somewhere. I got, here's some, uh, here's some stock cases. So you see all these big open areas. That's all filled in on this. See all these all these gaps and uh, the cases on Yamaha watercraft are uh, they're not water cooled, so this is they just fill in the void, so that way they can uh, port into them. You just notice like how thick this is. It's not even there in this one. Quite a bit bigger. I'm gonna send out my cylinder. Got a 1105 cylinder. I'm gonna send out. And I'm gonna see what Paul Lear thinks of it. It's hard to tell the lighting. But I had a uh, See if I can find the pistons for it. All right, so my 1105 here. These were the pistons that were in it, <laughs> and it still ran with like the piston like this, and uh, <laughs> granted not very well. Luckily, the uh, it didn't affect the cases or the the cylinder much at all. I, so this is uh this is the rear piston. This is the front. And you typically get, just get wet on the, It's typically like the, the carb. Maybe it's the outlet side, I don't know. But it's hard to see here. There's little hairline scratches, but I can't feel anything with my finger. Everything feels pretty smooth. I'm hoping Paul can. There's a process he called. Uh, so this is a it's a cast cylinder uh, with Nicosil coating, and Paul can do a diamond cut or a diamond hone on it. I'm hoping he can just hone the surfaces here and I can get it back quick and not have to re-nick the whole cylinder. Jeez. Just a little bit of wear there and there, but I can just barely feel something there, but I can't even feel something there in that one. I don't know. I ran this for uh, two summers, put quite a few gallons of gas through it. You can just see the porting of a TBE 1105. Just the huge uh, gaps in here that you can only achieve with a, a cast.
cast cylinder. I don't know, I've been really happy with it. Sometimes here, so these are epoxied in right here. And uh, I've seen cases where the epoxy can fail and you can get water that'll go right from your water jacket into your engine. Like there's actually epoxy up in here. So water can go straight from your water jacket right into your, your motor. That happened with uh, Corey's 1105 he got, so good lesson learned. I should probably refurbish those too when I have them out. But I have a uh, new crank. I got a Jeff Seabold rebuilt that for me. I think competitive crankshafts out of Idaho. New crank and I've got a box of pistons now. So I should be able to rebuild that. No problem. The case is just, they just look so nice. And I have a 701 build here. Just uh, kind of parts sitting out for. What do you think? Should I run it? Worth running? No, probably not. Yeah, I'm amazed like it has that crack on it and uh, I never did find any metal pieces or you know it just uh, it still ran but obviously not as well but uh, pretty good piston wash on those yeah they didn't no material got on top of the piston like that's just dust on that one but uh, yeah no material on top and the, uh, the domes and everything were just fine. What do you think? Am I lucky or, or what?